went to my ear, nose, throat doctor, got to his office. I'm like, oh, I feel lousy and da da. And I almost passed out, like as I was telling him about it. And he was like, whoa, and he had to lay me down. I, was, I didn't actually like faint, like blackout, but I got really woozy mm -hmm. and lightheaded and pale. And he laid me down and then gave me some juice. They thought it was like blood sugar, sat me back up. I got dizzy again. And so up and down, up and down, which is, I forget the word for it, but if your heart rate is fluctuating that much, it's not safe. It's not good yeah. for your body. So they called the paramedics. They came in, they slapped EKGs on me. They wheeled me out. I'm like on Rodeo Drive in a on a gurney, wow. getting wheeled into an ambulance going, what is going on? I mean, one of the one of the paramedics was very handsome, so that really that did help. <laughs> that really it helps. gave me a little bit of a. I was like, mm, thanks for taking care of me. <laughs> I started recognizing this. I started talking to somebody, and then I went on medication for anxiety. I thought because I had done I've done a lot of research for like on it and read about it, talked to some friends who were on it, and I was like, I wonder if that would help me. And so I I took a. Um, I, my doctor prescribed a SSRI, which is uh, Lexapro. It's the one that I was on. And this is maybe seven years ago, maybe. And when you first go on it, you're like really tired and you feel really weird and it's a strange adjustment. And then once I leveled out, I realized, first of all, I was in such a good mood all the time. I was like really relaxed. And when I started going on stage, I wasn't, I, this loop in my head, like it was much quieter. Wow. I wasn't freaking out about how I sounded or the, 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 the mix of the ears or the, the, you know, all these external things that were, you know, not the point of what I was supposed to be doing on stage quieted way down. And it, and it, it's like, I had to see, I had to feel that adjustment, that shift in order to really recognize what it was that was going on. And I realized, I'm like, yeah, this was, this was a form of anxiety that I was unwilling to call anxiety for so many years. But clearly with an anxiety medication, I'm feeling much freer from that right now. Ooh. I'm feeling way more comfortable and relaxed. I'm getting to enjoy it again. It's fun. And it was a big wake-up call for me. It made me realize it. And, and I definitely think with medication, it's like some people stay on it forever. And that works for them. Sometimes it's like a period of time. So I stayed on that medication for about eight months and then weaned off of it. I was like, okay, that was good. I needed that to like yeah. recalibrate. Yeah. And it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot. And at that point I thought, okay, with, with my doctor's um, help, I was like, you know what, let's, let's try and see now being off the medication if I can take what I just learned kind of through sense memory and realize it and, 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 and deal with it. And it did help a lot because it, it made it very clear what it was. Mm, giving it a name yeah. and going, okay, that's the thing. And I can't pretend it's not there anymore. Right. And, and I know what it feels like yeah. now. I can isolate the feeling in my mm. head. So that was good. And that, and that helped me a lot. So that, that, you know, that eight months of being slightly medicated, it wasn't even that much, but it was good. It really helped me kind of separate the irrational anxiety from reality. Yeah, I did the same with, I was on antidepressants for about six months. So I yeah. did it to sort of get my head above the clouds yeah. and then go, okay, I can see now. Cause you can't see when you're in it. You, you do, it's really hard you can't to be see objective. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so how have you managed your anxiety more recently? How, how's that been? Well, and so for, for a while there, it was, you know, this was really helpful, but it started to kind of creep up again a little bit. It started to, like, I was still getting kind of hard on myself in situations. It wasn't as bad as it, had, it used to be because I understood more now. And I was, I, I think the other thing about it is I was letting a little more go. I wasn't being as hard on myself. I was like, it's fine. And I, I think the other thing too is with work, I would go and start to watch things back that I felt in the moment, oh God, that was terrible. It was a mess. I, 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 I you know, such a perfectionist. I, I, I screwed up this part and this part and this wasn't good and I was really uncomfortable. And then I would watch back the, the performance and be like, well, it sounds great. What? I'm like this with podcasts. Why was I so in yes. my head? Why yeah. do we do this to us? I walk I away and go, Oh, I didn't ask this. I should have said that. I listen back and go, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Why do we do this to ourselves? It's not wanting to like, it's getting addicted to the feeling of, of, of negativity. I think yeah, it's like a loop. It's a loop. You get, you get stuck in it and it's like, when it's not there, you think, well, then what, what is it that I'm like fighting against? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, there's something there in to be us that wants to like yes. push against something. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I think, yeah, I think. I, it was fine for a while and then things got stressful again and, you know, just life became busier and 
uh, you know, the, the, the combination of things going on in the personal life and being very busy, very, very busy, jet lag, traveling a lot. Um, all of a sudden I just like hit a wall. This was, I think this was about five years ago. I, it was very strange because it started, it was like very TMI, but I had like a stomach infection that happened like randomly. Um, and you know, your stomach, like spiritually, like you hold a lot of anxiety and tension mm. in your stomach, right? Like most people, it's either your stomach or your, like your neck that yeah. like, go, right? So I started, I was just feeling pretty lousy because of the stomach infection, but I was having to run around and work and all this stuff. And I started getting like really dizzy, like these spells where they would, it would just like, all of a sudden I would feel like I was going to pass out. And it was such a puzzle to try to figure out because I, I saw a couple different doctors. No one could really pinpoint what was wrong. The stomach infection was gone. I had taken medicine to like to, to, to kill whatever bug that I had. And, you know, I was taking vitamins and this and that and the other thing. And then, you know, I, I tried to change up my diet really drastically to see if that helped. That was still not working. It was just a very weird few months where I just couldn't, I, it was like alarms were going off physically. And I was, you know, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, is it something, is, is this anxiety? Is this like something emotional that I'm going through? And it was weird because there were triggers to add to that, but it was also like a very physical situation. And I, I just didn't understand it. I didn't understand it at all. And it was scary. Because these like little spells would come over me out of nowhere for no reason, and I felt like I was going to pass out. I did like a t I was doing a TV show here in London, and I was talking, and like all of a sudden they flashed. They, there was like a, a there was like a little like video package they were showing, and it was of like a cancer patient or something kind of sad, and I just like I like almost like fainted. Is this panic attacks? Yeah, essentially. Mm. Yeah, I didn't really know what that. I didn't really know what a panic attack was. I had never really had this before. This is the first time this has happened, and so I was just like, "What is? What is this?" Because every time I had heard about a panic attack or knew people that had gotten them, it was like more of a hyperventilating thing. Yeah. Me was just like, "I'm gonna. Ch I'm gonna faint." That's my. That's my thing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That, and exactly the same like well first of all my heart would race so I thought I'm having a heart attack so I had yeah. my heart checked but the fainting thing I was like I don't understand no what, and I still don't because I can still get them not as frequently but I can still get that feeling of oh I'm going I'm going and I, and I never have fainted so I know like if I look oh, at so the data never, it's never happened I've never fainted mm. have you have you fainted then? yeah right. but it's usually like medical like if I get my like blood drawn or something yeah it's more of a well, I've come to learn a lot about it because I'm kind of a geek if I don't understand something if the more I know the better I feel yes so I get kind of, I get sort of, I have a bit of like health neuroses, like that's what was going on with all this because it was so confusing and because it was triggered by sort of a medical thing. Oh my God, the, I went into this deep, you know, black hole of WebMD and... <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's so insane. And and I, I, I did learn a lot, but you know, it's hard on the internet because you're getting like sort of alarmist ideas of yeah. things and it's not, you know, it's not a doctor, it's a, you know, a web browser. So I went to like one doctor who was just like, you just need to calm down. You're, you're really, you just need to like figure out a way to like self care. I don't think that's very helpful, is it? Well, it wasn't a way because he was like, you're just, you're, you're making this worse. You're freaking yourself out. So your nervous out. system is, is on edge. On fire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's like, we've got to figure out a way to like, let you kind of relax. And so I remember I had a lot of stuff on like for work and I just had to like go, you know what? I need to take a week and recalibrate. It was three weeks. <laughs> Throw that in there for management. It was three weeks. Yeah. So and and just to contextualise that, that's not easy in your your job because no. you've got gigs and you've got people turning up to the gigs yeah. and you've got TV shows where you are the main performer. Yeah. Like it's a logistical nightmare. Yeah. And for you, that's a hell of a lot of pressure and stress to then say, I'm not doing it. I have to prioritise myself, which is very hard. It is really hard. And it was what what I found weird about it is that I still couldn't really quite understand what it was that I was going through. So it was hard to sort of like go, well, this is why. Um, and and I I think the what I what I've learned since then was that um, it's the vasovagal nerve is what they call it, which is what triggers a fight or flight response inside the body. And some people have the tendency for the vasovagal nerve to hit the flight part. 
and that's like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna check out. Yeah. I'm gonna pass out. And it's and it is a physical reaction. It is not something that is very easy to sort of mentally control. Yeah, I don't feel I've got any body. control yeah, over it. It's in your it's something that like I mean, that's why they say these things can be chemical for people. It's something that it's like, it's just the way you're wired. It's just the way your body is, is reacting to something. And some of it obviously is in your head. Some of it, some of it is your brain sending the wrong signal to that part of the body. It's like, it's very complicated. But what I figured out was that, um, like I'd been going through that for about three or four weeks. And then I kind of went back to work and I was traveling and, I, it was still kind of coming up. I still felt really off. I was like, I, something is wrong. And I went to the doctor when I got back home after doing some shows on the east coast of uh, the States. I went back to LA and I was still getting this dizzy thing. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to... Uh, and it was like headache, neck thing. It was just everywhere. So I thought, maybe I have like a, a sinus infection that's like bad or something. And maybe that's making me dizzy and it's an infection. So I feel kind of off. That would explain a lot. And I have, I have a history of... That would be so much easier yeah. if it was a sinus infection. Yeah, and Please I, was like, be I have a, sinus a history infection. of this. Like, these sinus infections, I'm like, it's probably that, you know? So I went to my ear, nose, throat doctor, got to his office. I'm like, oh, I feel lousy and da da And I almost passed out, like, as I was telling him about it. And he was like, whoa. And he had to lay me down. I, was, I didn't actually, like, faint, like, blackout, but I got really woozy mm-hmm. and lightheaded and pale and... He laid me down and then gave me some juice. They thought it was like blood sugar. Sat me back up. I got dizzy again. And so up and down, up and down, which is, I forget the word for it, but if your heart rate is fluctuating that much, it's not safe. It's not good for your body. So they called the paramedics. They came in. They slapped EKGs on me. They wheeled me out. I'm like on Rodeo Drive on a gurney. Wow. Getting wheeled into an ambulance going, what is going on? I mean, one of the one of the paramedics was very handsome, so that really that did help. <laughs> that really it helped. gave me a little bit of a. I was like, hmm, thanks for taking care of me. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm in the ambulance, and the hospital that's like right around the corner. That's a, a nice hospital in in LA called Cedar Sinai. It's like yeah. great doctors there. They're fully booked. Oh, what? So I couldn't get in there. So they're driving me to a much further away hospital. It's not quite as quite as nice. And I get in there and, and they do a bunch of blood work and urine and all these tests on me. And I'm still freaked out because I'm like, am I like, do I have like something, is it like really bad? Is this like a, something serious? And the doctor comes back to me and goes, your magnesium levels are so low, like dangerous low. And I was like, oh. So that's, that's kind of what dehy- it's part of dehydration. I mean, that's like when you're dehydrated, that's one thing you have to put back into your body. Yeah. And I did some, you know, I, after that day, they put me on an IV, gave me a bunch of magnesium. I felt a lot better. I had to stay overnight. And um, I definitely felt, like, leveled when I got out of there. And I, I started doing my research and talking to another doctor. And they were like, you know, it's interesting because your magnesium levels can get shot because of dehydration. But also stress and lack of sleep all of a sudden can, like attack that part of your system mm. like cortisol which is like a stress hormone eats up magnesium so i had been really stressed so that made sense so it's just like a it was like a perfect storm of all of these things going on um i had a relationship that was sort of on its way out that was definitely something that was like adding to like a feeling of uh, untetheredness yeah. you know it was it was really tricky it was a tricky time and I, I got out of the hospital and I was like, okay, I'm going to talk. I need to go back on medication. I feel it. I think that's going to help. And so I did. And it like within like three days, my stomach relaxed. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was like almost instant. 